You start. Where's the bitter color? Okay. Quick. Okay. When I say Q, you start. Okay. Class attendance was very good. And I think we will enjoy the same thing today. I'm not, for the past one week when you left, I've not been very well. I've been down. You can see my hand, gadgets in my hands and so on. But this is a very, very important issue affecting the interests of this country, not the survival of this country. And I think that whether I'm in bed or not, I must come out to add a word to it. So the purpose of this meeting to the press conference is for us to so discuss more about the danger facing this country, not, not the uh, River City alone, not me, uh, River um Niger Delta alone, but the whole of this country, when one man, one man who is a minister of state, a position many of us have held 50 years ago, now feels that uh, President Tinubu had given power to insult people, to intimidate people, to do whatever thing he likes, to breach the constitution of Nigeria. Not only that, to intimidate people around them. And today, after the meeting, the Kangaroo Congress in River State, he now threatened the PDP governors. A, an organization he belonged to before for the eight years where he committed all his atrocities and so on with his, uh, with uh, the uh, with the support he received from his colleagues who were thinking that he was doing the right thing so i prepared a, a brief to be read to you after that I will uh, make my little contribution. Thank you and God bless. At this age, he's a father all over the country now. You have to hear his concerns about this country. And I dare say they are genuine and fantastic. Send him a message. <laughs> I won't hear from him in a while. Provide protection for public officers from harm, intimidation, and violence. Furthermore, assault on public officers. Prohibition Act of 1985 again details. Clear penalties for those who directly threaten public officers. Also, the Violence Against Persons Protection Act 2015 shuns violence, including physical harm or, as an instant case, putting fire against public officers. Not least is the Police Act of 2020. And indeed, a flagrant disrespect on the person of President Bola Metinibu GCFRO, who appointed him, and a threat to public. Peace. Even more serious is the fact that this is a violation of the laws of the country as it stands now. Wiki as a lawyer should have known better as one who has been in the same profession for more than 60 years. And as an elder statesman, 
I know that one of the greatest offenses that can be committed is to incite anarchy and threaten constituted authority of the state, as it is a sure means of inciting and causing unfavorable response in those states, especially among the youths, against the government in power, either at a federal or state level. As a matter of fact, what we get has done is a form of treason, as it is inciting its supporters and those in the other state to rise up against constituted authority. Go on. Go on. Okay. Open later to the Inspector General of Police, Kayo De Egbetepun. My dear IGP, arrest, yes, on weekend now with a warrant of arrest. I want to begin by saluting your continued service of our country and that of the very many gallant officers of the Nigerian <coughs> Police Force who daily stay awake to keep our nation safe. However, I want to add my voice to that of millions of Nigerians who are incensed at some recent development in the polity, which require your urgent attention. That is, with respect to the recent open threat by the minister of the FCT, yes, on Wiki, who happens to be the former governor of River State, to set fire in some other states. As your men who were in the audience would have reported directly to you, yes, on Wiki made this open threat to other 12 PDP governors while attending a court bad Congress of the PDP in Port Harcourt on Saturday, 31st August 2024. There is a high court ruling in Port Harcourt in suit number PAC slash 2282 slash CS 2024 against that exercise. Instead of vacating that ruling through an appeal, yes, on Wiki's group went to, <coughs> went to another court of coordinate jurisdiction in Abuja and got a ruling to hold the Congress. This is a completely wrong court process. I should not be allowed to stand. For as long as the first court ruling is persisting, the PDP Congress held by Wiki and its men remain a nullity. During this illegitimate PDP Congress, without caution and self-restraint, we can openly voice that we will ensure that the other governors do not have peace in their states for their support for the incumbent River State Governor, Sassim Fubara, his S.Y. protege, with whom he is having a running battle. In his west, now trending in Nigeria, just in case your men did not inform you, and I quote, let me assure all of you, not why we live, will anybody take away the structure of PDP from us. But let me tell people, I hear some PDP governors who say they will take over the structure and give to somebody. I pity those governors because I will put fire in their states. After many attacks, he continued, whether you are from Bauchi, I don't give a damn. Whichever, whichever state you are from, as far as I know, that you are trying to put your hand in river state, your hand will get burnt, and you will never sleep in your state." End of quote. My dear IG, at well over 97 years of age, and having held various positions in government, including being a minister of over 50 years ago, I am shocked that a public officer who is an appointee of a serving president can descend to this level. When we worked under General Yakubu Gawan GCFRO in the Federal Executive Council, the code of conduct which we were expected to keep, especially as it pertained to being instrument of public order, was at the highest level. No wonder that of my cabinet colleagues, General Marotala Mohamed, Alajisheo Shagari, Olushegon Basenjo, all went on to become heads of state and president of Nigeria, while the rest of us continued serving the country at the Senate or as governors in our various states. It must maintain law and prevent crime all over the country. What all this shows is the fact that this particular minister, Wiki, has gone overboard in this macabre dance. As we always say, nobody is above the law, and the law must take its course. If you could, in the past, arrest Shawari, for similar or less implicating threats against public peace and public officials, if you are right now leading prosecution in law court against people who participated in end bad governance protests, what are you waiting to add in the case of Wiki? 
Remember that you are under oath to uphold the law as a serving inspector general of police, including the fact that you will not be partial. I am sure your PhD degree in peace and security studies at Al Ikma University in Kwara State, which you earned and defended, has also taught you clearly that no citizen of the country has a right to threaten the peace of the country and be treated with kid gloves. I want to deviate a bit to perhaps educate you on the so called structure which has been insisting on holding on to. Today, you are the inheritor of a structure which goes back to Louis Edet, the first indigenous inspector general of police of the country. Since then, there have been 21 inspector generals of police. You are the 22nd. How many of these 21 come daily to intervene in your work, claiming that it is a structure? Similarly, virtually all the former governors of the 32 states are either ministers or serving senators. How will the country be if they are all talking about structures which they left behind and threatening to put fires if those structures are inherited by their successors or the incumbents? In River State itself, the truth is that structures have existed. And in order to grasp this issue, there is need to go back a bit into history. River State was created on 27 May 1967 as one of the first 12 states created when the nation moved from regionalism with four regions, Eastern, Northern, Western, and the Midwest. In no particular order, no state before Wiki was born on 15th December 1967. Incidentally, the man who muted the idea of state creation in the country to the then head of state, General Kubugongo, was a river state man, the late Pere Harrod Dapabriye. Until his death, he was the leader of the Niger Delta region, and I was his deputy. Today, by the grace of God, I am the leader, in addition to my, to my other rules in the country. Pere Dapabriye did not hang his life on River State because he muted the idea for its creation. He did not claim the political structure. In addition, some of the other original owners of the structures in the state are still alive. Having himself benefited from late chief Melfred Okilo, second republic governor and secretary to state government, the oldest serving governor is chief Rufus Ada George, who held sway from 1992 to 1993, during which sir Peter Odili was his deputy governor. Odili inherited this structure and this structure and served as governor from 1999 to 2007. Upon completion of his mandate, he handed over the same structure to Chief Rotimi Chibika Amechi, who served as governor from 2007 to 2015. Thereafter, this same structure was handed over to Barisa Yeson Wike. It may interest you to know that it was during this process that the present minister of FCT, who was a young lawyer and struggling to make a living in our motor parks, showed great efficiency in managing the motor parks in his local government. <laughs> so he was recommended by then serving Senator John Numbata to be made the local government chairman during the tenure of Odili. Thereafter, he served Amishi as chief of staff before the same Amishi recommended him to good Lord Jonathan to be a minister. The question I want to ask, if all these persons I mentioned come to claim to own the structure, where would be, where we be as a country, and where would be river states for Wiki to tell his supporters that no one will take their structure, not why they live. It's a deep-rooted incitement capable of causing anarchy. Let me advise you that river state is too strategic to be left in a chaotic state. As the higher headquarters of the country, this continuous state of threat to peace, including the fact that your men have taken over all the local government area headquarters, constitute a threat to peace and security in the entire Niger Delta. Even more is the fact that the same minister of FCT, whose interests your men are protecting, has gone beyond River State, is now threatening every other state with PDP at the end of her face. Nigerians demand nothing of you but to arrest this man and get him to retract his open threat of anarchy. You have no other choice than to re-examine your conscience.
We can also said because, and I quote, because I heard they got some money from signature bonus, and so their heads are getting big, that we put hand in my own state. Prepare because I have the capacity to also do the same thing in your state. End of quote. He is accusing the PDP state governors that they are using signature bonus monies given to them to take over his political structure. Who gave him the structure? How did he get the monies he is spending? He is alleged to have acquired several properties, including the Hyper City, spread across Port Harcourt. One of the branches of the Hyper City is built on a state-owned land, which was used as abattoir. He evacuated people from there and acquired it for himself. Where did he get the money? Can we can show the status of his finances and wealth before he ventured into politics? Can he show his financial status and wealth since he started holding political office? How did he build his private home, his edifice, which is equated to a state house annex in his village in Obiakbo? What about his properties in Abuja? Today he is boasting that he has the capacity to set fire in state governed by constituted authorities. What carelessness, because nobody questions the sources of wealth of people in this country. So, one man can amass state resources to himself, and we have the temerity to threaten states in the Federation. I ask, are we in Banana Republic? At this juncture, it is very appropriate to ask Barista Yes on Wiki to account for the various sums of money belonging to River State that he donated to various organizations, women, groups, government, etc. He, had some, he has some time ago boasted that he purchased forms for all the contestants vying for the various political offices in River State. How did he get the money? There's nothing that Wika has not done in his attempt to sabotage the government of Sin Fubara and install the former speaker of the River State House of Assembly, Manti Samawule, his brother, as governor. But all have failed. He arranged the meeting which he personally attended with the former 27 members of the State Assembly. It was at that meeting that the notice of impeachment was issued against Governor Sin Fubara at an ungodly hour of about 7 a.m. On 11 December 2023, the House met very early in the morning. It was here that the 27 members openly defected to the APC, singing APC song of solidarity and waving APC flags. They were received and welcomed by Tony Okosha, who was the caretaker chairman of the party, APC River State. But when it dawned on Wiki and his men that they had goofed, that they had shot themselves on the foot. They want to turn the nation constitution upside down. Section 109G is very clear. Up to this moment, they are in court shopping for one judgment or the other, one ruling or the other. Wiki has devised another state in River State with him as the governor and the 27 members, East House of Assembly members. Will this be possible? Definitely not. I also wish to use this medium to wholeheartedly on behalf of our people heal and congratulate the PDP Governors Forum under the able, courageous, and competent leadership of Governor Bala Mohammed, Governor of Baoshi State. I recall vividly how the much adored governor, who as a serving senator, was recommended by his fellow serving senators to be appointed minister of the FCT due to his survey acumen and courage for justice and fair play displayed on the floor of the Senate. As minister of FCT, he never used his position to harass, insult, and or torment residents of Abuja, particularly those dealing in property and estates. This sagacity Governor Bala Mohammed has once again, together with his colleagues, the PDP governor, displayed as chairman of the PDP Governors Forum on its recent action on the River State Crisis, a PDP state. I reproduce here under part, I reproduce here under part of what the Director General of the Forum, Dr. Emmanuel Agbo, said 
in the forum support for governor Simina Lai Fubara of River State as published in Vanga newspaper of 4th September 2024. And I quote, Governors elected on the platform of the People's Democratic Party PDP have berated the minister of the FCT chief yes on wiki for threatening to set their state on fire should they meddle in the affairs of the party in River State. The statement and threat to peaceful coexistence made by Wiki to put fire in PDP control states are unbridled, irresponsible, and without ambiguity, totally unacceptable as it undermines effort to build and maintain peace, cohesion, collaboration, and mutual respect amongst leaders and members of the party. It is rather unfortunate that this is coming from someone who was once a member of this highly revered forum as a former governor. The forum has always maintained a touch one touch of philosophy and individually and collectively stand by and support each other no matter the circumstances. A tradition wiki tremendously enjoyed in his days of travail as governor of River State. End of quote. Like recounted by the PDP Governors Forum, through its Director General, yes, on wiki, the, pres the present F Minister of FCT was an active member of the PDP Governors Forum. I am sure Nigerians will well recall how he arrogated to himself so much power from the Ali Modu Sheriff slash Ahmed Makarafi National Party Chairmanship Saga to the issue of holding the party's convention in River State. But I managed to produce this address and uh, you will remember on the 24th of May this year I addressed a letter in this hall, open letter delivered to the Inspector General Pol uh, Police uh, to see that government policemen, public officers were not being used illegally in supporting Wiki and his men. Up to today, I've not had anything from him, and I still believe that he has not changed. That's why I said he should now arrest him. With a with, uh, with, uh, warrant. And uh, because we can believe that the only person in this country today that's above him is Mr. President. He's free to insult anybody, to do whatever thing he likes. But if you go with a warrant of arrest, he will not be able to escape from it. Well, everything I wanted to say about the Inspector General Police has been said there. I'm calling on him, a very respected, intelligent officer. He has all the qualities to be one. To step out in the interest of this country. Not to, not to allow personal relationship. to undermine the constitution of Nigeria, which Wiki has breached. And nobody is talking to him. Mr. President so, took an oath to defend this constitution. But today, he's having himself alone, cannot breach the constitution of Nigeria because section one of the constitution is very clear on that. Every decision of the Constitution binds everybody, every authority, including Mr. President. But for him today to run a blind eye and allow one of his ministers to make a mess of this country, today ministers that have been automatically removed by the Constitution by, by, by moving to APC, are still parading themselves as, as members of the House of Assembly with the Speaker acting, taking, taking the, harassing the governor, taking him to all sorts of courts. Today, 
Winter is controlling all the judiciary. He does whatever he had one one judge, not sure, who is giving all the decision. But the situation is very clear. Section 109 of the Constitution is very clear. PDP is intact. PDP had its um, uh, had its um, uh, neck beating on the 18th of April. We they attended. Fulbright, Governor Fulbright attended. The, uh, the, the chairman of board of trustees attended. The acting chairman attended. So what, where, where is the breakage? The secretary attended. But today, Winke is saying that they are still members. What have they done? They now said that the 27 members did not properly resign from PDP. And I did. And I did. Right Honorable Austin Okpara, former Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Senator Lee Maimba, Dr. Abiye Sekibo, former Minister of Transportation, Sir Celeste Nomea, who was once the Governor of River State until he was removed by the Supreme Court, and other members to come out and defend their party and their state, using all constitutional means, especially now that the Court of Appeal has set aside the decision barring them from attending national Executive Council neck meetings. As a result of a case brought against <coughs> them in, in court in Abuja instituted to prevent them from attending court calls and neck meetings, for them to show strong support and solidarity for Governor Simina Alayi Fubara, who, by the laws of their party, is the leader of PDP River State. No one, neither the National Working Committee, NWC of the party of or yes on wiki can or should be allowed to change arbitrarily or go against the rules of the party. The party constitution is supreme. In talking about Wiki's revolt against constituted authorities, it will be remembered that Wiki has disobeyed several Supreme Court judgments. I also call on all groups, the Ogonis, the Quires, the Jos, the Eshes, women, women, youths, men and all justice and truth loving indigenous of river state to stand up against this inordinate ambition of one man to own the state structure this will also motivate all truth and justice loving nigerians within and outside the country including the pdp state governors to join to nip this evil in the board i wish you the best and extend my fatherly blessings to you Chief Dr. E.K. Clark, OFRO, C.O.N. Thank you. Thank you. That can even run for you. Brutally. <coughs> Brutally frank. Therefore, they were still member of the House. It is this case of retaining these people as members of PDP that they wrote a letter to the Court of Appeal counteracting the, the one written by the legal advisor of the party. What a grievous fellows. Winke is already dancing naked in the, pub, in the marketplace with one leg in APC, with the other leg in PDP. But he had failed and he would be consumed. Could you imagine? Winke recently insulted the members of the Board of Trustees, starting with the chairman, Senator Wambara, who was number three man in Nigeria during the person just time, was the president of the Senate. When Wiki was in school, uh, he was just doing some little jobs. He called him after the, uh, that com um, uh, conference um, meeting. The chairman of the board of trustees, Wambara, stood up to make a speech at the next meeting that they should look into all cases of uh, infringement, people around the party. Five days after, Wambara received a letter written in red ink by 
uh, by wicked to him. And he said, Wambara, Haba, how would your late wife feel now that you are embarrassing yourself and that of your family? You are a disgrace to your generation. The river state issues, matter, will consume you in writing. And I've already secreted. Recently again, I encouraged them to meet the governor in River State. And they, they did. About 12 of them. Past governors, past senators, and so on. They were all there. And it was agreed that the board of trustees should try everything to bring them to, uh, to bring the party together. Mwike said he will never attend any meeting of the board of trustees. They are barriers that they will, and so forth. Abusing everybody. And some people are saying that, oh, there should be a reconciliation committee. To do what? To do what? So I thought, Wiki has gone beyond. He has something else about this structure. Whether his own structure is money, he stored in river said which he must protect. Or something else. Otherwise, as I said, properly explained by, uh, by Chief Ada George, he spoke to me that he was, as I, as I said in the paper, that he was a member of uh, Okilo's government, the first civilian governor. When Okilo left, he became the governor and he inherited the structures. When uh, he left, I mean, uh, this uh, uh, Odili was his deputy. He handed over them to him. But meanwhile, one in Bata came as I explained in my paper that Wike should be taken as a chairman of the Apple Local Government Council because he was working very hard as a church and bail lawyer there, collecting rent. And it was made by Odili because he couldn't make it before the coup took place. Now, this same man was handed over handed over the structures to Ameshi. Ameshi handed, uh, then Wicked became Ameshi's uh, uh, chief of staff, uh, who took over the, 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 the structures. When Jonathan and his wife imposed Wicked on our people as governor of River State. So, he is saying now that he will, he will protect these destructions until his death. But he had earlier told us that the main reason for keeping the structures is because he wanted to give, uh, he wanted the President uh, Tinubu to win in 2027. If he is saying that he will choose the structures until his death, it means there's something more than that. That's why I'm calling on the police. Inspector General Police to investigate. Nobody's above the law. Otherwise, Nigeria will soon be facing additional trouble. This, the youths of those 13 states are not going to keep quiet and allow Wicked to burn their states. And then once again, I'm calling all, all the people who says that Fubra is the leader of PDP in River State to come out. But those are, those are I mentioned, the secondos and others who used to sit with the Wike, dine with him, eat with him. Compromise every 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 aspect of the search with him. 
to, to lead, come out. Get people to follow the governor. Otherwise, it's not enough to, to say, who is wicked? So, I'm appealing to everybody in the River State. Organizations, come out and stand by the governor. No, no violence, nothing. So once again, thank you and God bless. That's a very good question. I've done my homework. I'm about 60 years at the bar. Even though I'm not a son because of uh, I was doing government job. I was a brilliant lawyer. So, I've done my homework. There are various laws of this country. I've even got some uh, senior lawyers to help me who have now discovered that Mwike has breached a number of Nigerian laws, public laws, and so on. He has committed crime. And for him to, uh, to call and uh, to, uh, to say that he will burn states belonging to PDP governors and so on, it's treasonable. It's treasonable. All of their totality. Mwike has committed treason. Is it your worry that committed treason but say, I call for revolution in Nigeria? Is that what you are saying? Where did he say it? In what ground? At what ground? What impact did he make? But here is a, a serving minister in the Federal Republic of Nigeria saying that he will bond the states of his colleagues he will burn their hands and they won't sleep again in their houses. He will, he will, he will uh, do everything to, uh, to disorganize the governments of those states. Nobody, no governor, no minister can go to that extent. It's a breach of the Constitution. So he has committed a series of offenses. We will come out after some time. The picking ways they make my man not sleep. He no good sleep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Politics. That's why I made the statement. But unfortunately, when I got back to Abuja, I had a press conference and punch. Correspondent asked me a question to assess the cor corruptibility of this government of this president, starting with Abatonjo, which I did. I thought Abatonjo was now it's true. He brought the FCC, he brought ICPC, <coughs> but today he's one of the most corrupt presidents in this in this world. I said so. I said, but for Yeradwa, man was sick, but he never wanted Ibori and others who, uh, who sponsored his election to be, to be perse uh, persecuted and uh, to be sent to court. But he did nothing. He was clean, man. As for Jonathan, nice man, but I do not think Jonathan had the political will to face this type of dangerous um, corrupt, corrupt practices in Nigeria now. And um, Mr. Benabati took it against me that I betrayed uh, Jonathan, that uh, tomorrow I will call the Buhari my, my son. So I answered back, back, and the whole thing was settled. But I said in that meeting, that anything affecting the interest of Nigeria, I will fight, whether I'm inside the party or not. Did I not say so? Yes. I said so. So my son, what I'm saying today is outside party politics. 
affects the people of River State, affects the people of Nigeria. And while I'm still alive, I must make my contribution to stop it. Because I fear only God, no human being. I respect people. This is our government. Whether we elected him or not, we elected him. And therefore we must support. In supporting, we must be listened to. When Nigerians, nobody is a first class citizen and nobody is a second class citizen. So at my 97, I'm going to 98. I'll continue to talk. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you, Daddy. I yeah. think we're